What's good, you me gang? It's your boy you Nuju back with another video. Right now we got CJ the fake blood behind Whoopty. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so that you don't What's know about CJ. You don't know Whoopty is the song. Oh okay. You don't remember that song? Whoopty. Uh, blue cheese. Uh. Blue cheese. I like blue cheese. Sound like that, but wings. CJ is is the dude that came up. That's why they think mm -hmm. he an industry plant. You know what I'm saying they think people just put him in there, you know what I'm saying, saying mm -hmm. they get gang and stuff to see if they can blow him up and it happened. Oh. They were saying oh, he fake type junk. Oh. Not real, none of that stuff he do real. But y'all, we gonna get right to it. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, hit that post notification bell. Let's go. Well, let tell you all. Jay's a drill rapper from Staten Island who blew up last year with the hit song Whoopty. But since going viral, many question his street cred and accuse him of being fake. And why is that? When you blow up, they start to question that stuff like are oh, you rapping about this now that you know what i'm saying like even with young boy they tested him they test everybody that come in the game see if you like faking or you not he look like he could be some kid in you too I know he's gonna say that. let's get into the career and <laughs> wow. come up of cj the one of the blood nice. behind whoop d cj first got the world's attention with his hit song whoop d which dropped july 30th 2020 and peaked at number 10 on the billboard hot 100 the track instantly blew up thanks to the hard-hitting beat and viral music video which shows CJ and his homies posted on the block, rocking red rags and shouting the catchphrase, Whoopty, a blood greeting call. The beats of Whoopty featured a sample from the Indian song, Sanam Ri. This same sample was famously used in the beat for Exposing Me by Mimo yeah, 600. Yeah, that sample, that's that why I was like, yo, where that, where that come from? Um, yeah, they, he was using it too, King Von. Okay. Which was also remixed by drill rappers like FBG Doug, Ruga, and 2 So video. the song became an instant hit because of the familiar beat, generic bars, and catchy hook. Not long after it popped off, people began taking a closer look at CJ to find out if he was really Whoopty or just claiming for the clout. CJ grew up in Staten Island and comes from a Puerto Rican family. He started rapping as a hobby when he was nine, but took it more seriously at 14 when he started dropping tracks on SoundCloud and YouTube. He had a few tracks on SoundCloud before blowing up with Whoopty, including the song with the OG fake blood, 6ix9ine, called Pop. But none of these tracks made much of an impact online or even in New York City. He self-released the track Whoopty in July 2020 using the beat he found on YouTube and became an overnight success. He later signed to Warner Records and Cruise Control Entertainment. But here's where the accusations of CJ being the industry plant first started. The CEO of Cruise Control Entertainment, James Cruz, is also CJ's uncle. Mm. CJ said multiple labels reached out to him, but Warner offered the best situation, probably because he had yeah, family members and- Yeah, family members there. So they are, they building this, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Positions at the company. Nobody His signed uncle that James quick. Cruz is a new to get with deep quick. connections in the industry. He worked for Reebok in the 90s before making the transition into music and working for Bad Boy. Okay, Cruz got close to Buffy and ended up running his entire organization. He worked with Combs Enterprises for almost 10 years before leaving to start his own Latin focused music marketing firm. So, CJ yeah, seemed like the perfect see. project for his uncle James, who was looking for the next big Latin star to take over New York. At first, CJ had a more melodic, auto-tune heavy approach to rapping, but this didn't attract much attention. CJ just wanted the clout, and he wasn't trying to spend the next decade grinding in the music industry to make a name for himself. So, you know he took notes from 6 9 Dirk did that. He, he took a decade to grind. Ten years, literally. And he made it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Playbook started making aggressive drill not tracks, bonding his alleged gang ties. To his credit, it worked. And Whoopty was one of the biggest songs in New York in the summer of 2020. The track went viral on TikTok too, which boosted his popularity. Plus, it got a major push on radio and other outlets thanks to the ties from his Uncle James. So overnight, CJ went from an unknown rapper to one of the biggest up and coming stars in New York. But all the attention also brought questions from fans about who this new rapper was, as well as the gang he was from. He's clearly claiming blood from the bandanas and the use of the term Whoopty. But the lyrics to the song are pretty basic and don't say what borough or what set he's from. This is when rumors went around that CJ ain't really who he claimed to be and was just another cloud chasing rapper using gangs to blow up in the music industry. Whoopty's not a phrase that CJ made well, up. I'm saying it's gangs, a common... gangs is a big part of the music industry. Big, big, Producing the Bronx now, by the Bloodhound Brand. CJ crossed the line when he did an interview with Genius where he claimed credit for the word Whoopty. He said that it was a term he invented and used with his homies. He even went as far as filing a trademark for the phrase so no one else could use it for commercial purposes. This upset the Bloodhound Brands who had been using the word for years and wanted proper credit for creating it. Mm. Bloodhound Brands founder, LeBram, even called in from prison, calling out CJ for taking the term and not giving proper credit. 
LeBrun was sentenced to 30 years in prison back in 2019 in connection to his leadership at the Bloodhound Brand. Even though he's locked up, he's still tapped in with what's going on in the streets and had to set the record straight about who really started Wolfie. He gave CJ props for making a hot song, but accused him of stealing the word Wolfie from the Bloodhound Brands and denies having any affiliation with the rapper. So first and foremost, CJ made a hot song, but the content that he used is not his content. So his foundation is based off a of lie. He's not Wolfie. He don't know nothing about Wolfie. Mm. He just seen a fly splash and he jacked it. Mm. He called him out mm. for claiming a set and lifestyle that he and a bunch of other brands are serving decades in prison over. Trump, he it? says the only reason the song was hot in the first place is because of the respect they build in New York. But he's disrespecting the brands by saying he created the word. He makes it clear he ain't beefing with CJ or saying he gonna do something to him. But he had to set the record straight about where Whoopty started. This hurt CJ street cred. And after that, more gang members and other New York drill rappers started questioning his affiliation. And once, they do, that, once they do that, they find out it's rap for you. Mm. Everybody gonna stop rocking with you because you wow. capped him. Came in the game capping. Mm. A rapper affiliated with LeBram also hopped on live to call out CJ for being the fake blood with no ties to the Bloodhound Brams yeah. and for copywriting the term Whoopty, even though he never put in any work for the set. First you make the song Whoopty, then you make the song Bop. That's all I shit, boy. And you still not trying to pay homage? Then you gonna copyright our shit? <clears throat> you copyright our shit? Mm. Like, yo, boy, your head not good. The Bloodhound Brams was one of the most violent gangs in New York before being taken down in the major gang indictment in 2016. They operated in various locations in New York City, as well as Westchester, Elmira, and Pennsylvania. They was accused of trafficking massive amounts of crack, cocaine, and heroin throughout the state of New York and Pennsylvania. A lot of Bloodhound Brim leaders Dang. was later arrested in a RICO indictment and charged with crimes that included racketeering, murder, attempted murder, drug trafficking, and Dang. assault. The Brim started in Los Angeles, but later branched out to New York in the early 90s. Like most blood sets in NYC, the Brim started in prison at Rikers Island and then spread out to the streets later on. There's multiple Brim sets in New York that make up what they call the Blood Brim. He probably ain't really know all the background to the, to the word. He just was using it because it sound good. But look, that During the holiday sure rise, the Brims was behind a lot of wild what crimes that eventually led to their downfall. Right? In 2012, yeah, the Brim and another blood oh, member named Don P got arrested for a shootout at a chicken spot in the Bronx oh. where they allegedly fired at ops for the AK-47. The Brim was later found guilty of attempted murder for the wow. crime, which was one of the events that led to his 30-year sentence. Oh, in 2014, a Brim leader named Kevin Melton made headlines after kidnapping the father of one of the prosecutors who was responsible what? for locking him up for life. Melton Man. got hit with life in prison for ordering Man. a hit on someone Man. in 2011. To get revenge, Melton went after one of the prosecutors who was responsible for convicting him. He set it all up using a cell phone he snuck into jail and ordered five members to kidnap the prosecutor. But they ended up going to the wrong address and instead kidnapped their father, Frank Jansen. The gang kidnapped Jansen from his crib in Atlanta and called his wife and told her they was going to torture and kill her husband if she ain't followed their demands. But... The FBI was able to intercept a call between Melton and the kidnappers and found Jansen at an apartment complex in Atlanta. So, the Brims was responsible for a wave of terror, not just in New York, but all over the country. This eventually led to the indictment that took down many high-ranking members of the gang, wow. including LeBrim. But even with most of their leaders locked up, the Bloodhound Brims are still well-respected in New York. So, for LeBrim to make a public statement denying CJ's credibility was a major blow to the rapper's career. Plus, it wasn't just Brim members taking shots at the rapper. Brooklyn rapper 22G's also came out and questioned CJ Street Cred. He signed with uh, Kodak. So, so that's a Kodak artist right here. 22G's. So nobody does fiction or rap anymore. What? Cap rap? No, you can't cap rap. <laughs> if you cap rap, you can't. Brooklyn rapper 22G's okay. also came out I mean, and questioned CJ Street I mean, you can cap rap by love stuff, but when it really come and they really search it, yeah, mm. you, you done. Mm. Okay. Members taking shots at the rapper. Brooklyn rapper 22G's also came out and questioned CJ Street Cred. In January 2021, 22G's tagged CJ on Instagram saying, At real CJ giving me 6 9 vibes and boy from Staten Island, the safest borough in NYC. He also dropped a Whoopty remix called Goofy, where he took shots at CJ calling him a groupie who was just jacking the Brooklyn drill sound to make himself more popular. In interviews, 22G's made it clear that it wasn't real beef, but he had to address the situation because CJ ain't give respect to the originators of the sound that made him famous. CJ responded to 22G's with the track Hit Up, where he don't just diss the rapper, but take shots at his entire gang, the Gangsta Disciples. On the track, he raps, I catch a blicky, 
man down in my city, referring to 2 gs Blicky Gang. And in the video, he's seen throwing up GDK, which means Gangsta Disciple Killer, the gang that 2 gs is from. So not only is CJ starting beef with another rapper, he wants smoke with one of the biggest gangs in America too. Another popular Brooklyn drill rapper, Busy Banks, came out and said CJ jacked his bars and stole his whole flow. Busy posted on his Instagram story, that CJ need to give me my credit, no cap. Jacking my lingo and flow, I'm tired of not getting the recognition I deserve. I started this new wave of drill rap. Let's talk about it. If you listen to the flow and lyrics on Hit Up, it sounds similar to Busy Banks tracks Neo and Don't Start Part 2. So instead of earning people's respect, CJ was quickly making an enemy. In September 2021, 22Gs did an interview with No Jumper, where Adam22 reveals that CJ was set to do an interview, but canceled at the last minute. The reason he canceled was because the person in charge of their social media posted something about the beef between him and CJ. So CJ got in his feelings and canceled the whole interview. We had an interview booked with CJ. <laughs> Over. And then somebody on the social media team, they posted up Whoa, dude. 22Gs dissing CJ. They yeah. just posted about it. Because it's notable, it's news, you know, we're paying attention. We were all talking about it in the group chat, so they posted it. CJ interview canceled. This was another L for the Staten Island rapper. He could have used the interview to tell his side of the story, but instead, he chose to stay quiet. CJ never really addressed the accusations that he's false claiming and still another rapper's style and flow. He also had dropped another single that brings the same kind of buzz that Whoopi did. He dropped an EP in early 2021 called Loyalty Over Royalty, which was executive produced by French Montana. Okay, but French none of the Montana, other songs made the same impact as Whoopi. Unless CJ can switch up his whole style and come back with a banger that puts him on the charts, it'll probably just be a one-hit wonder. Mm. Just like 6 9 part of his appeal was his gang ties. Now ain't gonna lie, but 6 9 is not a one-hit wonder, though. This dude's a one here. One six nine is actually, he actually put him on the billboards. He all his jump was like on the billboards. You go down on YouTube, all his jump got three hundred mil plus. But he wanted one here. One he faking, yeah, he faked. And you know what I'm saying? That's he snitched. A, the no cap rap was you talking about? Yes, right? yeah, yeah, he snitched when he, when he okay. was rapping about that drill stuff. But right. he's not a one hit wonder. He know okay. how to make music. He know how to make good music. Not, okay. I wouldn't say good, but decent. But that's basically okay. the end of that one. It was exposed. Fans just move on to the rappers who really live what they rap. Oh, yeah. That's basically the end of the video. What you think about that? Faking. Mean, I don't know what to think about it. Okay. What? I don't know what to think about it. It's just more information that's out there. Yeah, but y'all, that's basically yeah. the end of the uh, video. You know, I'm CJ Whoop D. I don't even know what the video is called because I take y'all. But. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, hit that post notification bell, man. Yeah.